Hi friends, welcome to Tabletop Tonight. I'm Ruel Gaviola and I'm talking about the games that I played in March and April 2023. So this is Ruel's wrap up and let's get to the, uh, to the games. Um, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, first of all, I want to shout out all the games that I played on Board Game Arena and Sovereignty. I played a total of 43 games online, folks. That's where I did most of my gaming lately because in March I went to Dice Tower West. I came back and unfortunately I got COVID, got sick for a couple of weeks, and I just limited myself to um, you know gaming online uh, with friends and also friends in the Discord community, which you can uh, join by clicking on the show notes below. And by the way, since you're here, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe uh, subscribe button, please. Um, and you know after that. My father unfortunately passed away, so I've been, uh, you know, dealing with that. Um, I do want to thank everyone for reaching out and sending their best and their condolences and their well wishes. It really does mean a lot to me and my family, so thank you. Um, so slowly but surely getting back into uh, gaming, um, you know, a lot of stuff on Board Game Arena and Sovereignty. The most I played, uh, the most played games I did online were Castles of Burgundy. I'm so hyped about that deluxe edition. I've been playing a lot digitally. Um, also, Dice Miner, which I love to play on Sovereignty, just the solo uh, game. It's quick, easy, and fun. And um, I do miss rolling the dice in person, but it's still really uh, nice implementation. And then the one I got into really uh, the late, um, just a couple of days ago, but late in April, was Hardback uh, from Fowers Games. Oh, such a great implementation. But we're here to talk about in-person gaming, analog gaming. Uh, let's kick things off uh, by going over here, if I can find the right button. Uh, there it is. Uh, this is a surprise to everyone that knows me. I, you know, do we, does anyone play Mousetrap? Because I played Mousetrap and it was so much fun. I played with the Tabletop News crew. Uh, they were going through their Kickstarter campaign and, <coughs> uh, you know, I'm not going to try to recommend this game to y'all. Uh, y'all are, you know, veteran gamers. Um, and even if you're new gamers, if you like it, cool. I'm not going to, no, no hate whatsoever. Uh, but, you know, we had a fun time just being silly with this. And it reminded me, I had such a great time with uh, Tabletop News Crew. You can see all the guests there, uh, Nora, Brianna, Michelle Wynn Bradley, and myself. Uh, we, we got silly and had fun. And isn't that what gaming's all about, folks? Just having a good time. And this was such a throwback to childhood. Um, we, we talked a lot about how when we were kids, we didn't, we didn't actually finish a game of Mousetrap. It was like we always like built it up and then it, it never worked. And then, okay, let's go do something else. But this time we actually played a couple of games and it was fun and it was hilarious. And, you know, again, I'm not going to try to convince you this is the greatest game in the world. But given the right people, like this crew here, right circumstances, it could be a lot of fun. And especially, I know with kids, uh, they love that. So that's why it's my number 19 of the analog games I played uh, this month. Or actually, yeah, so this is March and April. Again, I'm combining the two uh, months because um, I wasn't able to do uh, last month's due to uh, illness. But let's move on to my number 18. Uh, this is a game that I played at Dice Tower West with um, Amy and Maggie of uh, Thinker Themer and some other uh, friends uh, played it at the convention. I only got a photo. I didn't. We didn't. I didn't do video <coughs> of it. Uh, this is um, a game that's going to be released at Gen Con, I believe. And um, I like this game, but I have mixed feelings um, about it. And actually, I remember talking to uh, Amy and Maggie about it. Uh, you know, we we played it, and the first thing that really stood out uh, was the artwork. Um, you know, I'm doing this a video on May 1st, 2023. It's the start of Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month here in the U.S. And this is an Asian themed game. You know, it's got the Japanese garden theme. Really, I mean, it's about bonsai trees, right? Growing them. A uh, nice little game of tile lane, set collection. But some of the artwork is a little questionable. Um, it's really, it's close to bordering on uh, the, the old, like, caricatures of uh, Japanese... Um, you know people and it's really unfortunate that it's it came out like you know i was really curious to see how people would react because when i opened the game i was like oh really i mean and i don't know can you see i don't know if you can see i can zoom in a little bit the, this character here the uh like i i forget what it was the gardener or whatever it, it's got that how, how do i if you know the stereotypes and the tropes of old school you know hollywood uh, I mean, the, the most awful one that I think of is Mickey Rourke in uh, Breakfast of Tiffany's. It's got that sort of like, you know, look. It's close, but I don't know. Um, 
uh, pretty disappointing but besides that i don't know the, again this is an early copy they could change things i don't know i'll probably be reaching out to the publisher to ask about that but you know the game itself is uh it's a nice it's a nice like relaxing game i think uh, just i really wish they would have done something a little different with that uh artwork there so a little disappointment but hey the game itself not too shabby uh bonsai uh tree uh, a game about growing uh, bonsai trees so pretty cool but hey let's move on uh to some happier times here and this was super happy i found this video of uh, kimberly tolson from tabletop uh tolson uh she's also a contributor to the rada runs channel i am uh, uh her um uh, peer and uh, co-worker there at the Rotten Runs Through Channel. Look at this video. She did this Green Team Wins video. She played all the characters. I mean, she's awesome. Green Team Wins is a fantastic party game. I love, love, love this game. It's one of my favorites of last year. Uh, super easy to learn. Um, it's got sort of like that, you know, group mentality thing. So you're trying to, you know, come up with uh, words uh, based on the clue. So there it is right there. You can see the example that Kimberly's doing with all her different Kimberly's. <laughs> and if you match with the uh, team or the other players, the majority is going to go to the green team. And when you're on the green team, you get a point. Uh, if you were previously on the green team from a pre uh, the previous round, you get an additional point. If you are not in the majority, you go to the orange team. Wah, wah, you don't get any points. You play like 15 rounds. <clears throat> and then the most points wins. It's so fast and easy to pick up, and it's always a crowd pleaser. Um, I equate this to like, you know, Blank Slate, Just One. These are these wonderful party games that, um, word based games. And uh, Green Team Wins, folks, may be the best of them all. Um, really solid game. Um, okay, let's move on to number 16. This is a longtime favorite of my household. and. If you've never played this, I hope you do real soon. And I think it's back in print. But number 16 on my games that I played last uh, March and April are Strike. Is Strike. Come on, are Strike. Is Strike. Uh, this is um, a dice checking game of set collection. And it's got uh, this really cool mechanism where you have an arena, which you can see there in the video. Um, it's literally just a, the uh, box tray. But you're throwing dice in there. You throw them one at a time. And you try to match them so you can take uh these are your gladiators right you're going to an arena it's so funny that they actually have a theme to this so you throw your dice if it matches you take it out and your turn's over if it doesn't match you can push your luck and try to uh you know get another match roll one more die <clears throat> if you match more than one you take them all as long as they're pa uh, they're similar you take them out there's an x for the number one if that x shows up you take it out of the game you also take out dice uh in the game if you oh Look at this, the video. That's funny. What are we doing there? Um, so if you uh, get an X, it's out of the game. Also, if the dice jumps out of the arena or just you roll it by accidentally on the table, it's out of the game. You go until one player standing. Um, and the really cool twist is if there are at any time there are no dice, like let's say I took the last pair of dice out of there. or a three, I had a three of a kind fives, took them out. There's no more dice. The next player has to to throw all their dice in. They're all in. So there's some really funny moments there. Oh, it's so good. Um, it, it is one of those games, again, that plays really well with non-gamers. But for gamers, we always, I don't know, we just, we have such a great time with it, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, folks, I am recording this live on Twitch uh, for those of you watching on YouTube. And, you know, uh, one of our friends here, uh, Legend says, Strike uh, says, I blame Crystal. Yeah, Crystal Dax of the Board Game Blitz um, podcast hypes up this game. And she actually had like six copies at one time. I don't know if she has more now, uh, but she had accidentally gotten this big shipment. So uh, at the Slash Dice Tower West, we had a big tournament and Legends was one of our uh, um, players there. I got to play in it. Um, I forgot who won. Uh, I think oh, it was Ambi, her partner, her husband, uh, Toby, actually won the, uh, the um, uh, tournament. But such a fun game. Again, one of those games that are so easy to pick up and awesome, uh, awesome game. It goes out of print every now and then. I think it is back in print. So if you see it, folks, don't hesitate. Go get it. Strike is so good. Okay. Ooh, yum, yum, yum tea. Uh, let's move on to uh, my number uh, 15 game. So we had 16 strike. Um, hey, after 16, next up in line is 15. Who would have noticed that? Uh, this is... Uh, a game I haven't played in a while, and I'm looking at this video here. This is from like three years ago when Michelle, Lauren, and I uh, first started uh, streaming on Twitch. 
And as you can see, I had no idea how to do a top-down camera. This is just my smartphone, seriously, literally duct taped to a tripod uh, sitting on top of a chair on top of uh, a stack of games. But hey, you do what you can, uh, you know, uh, in the streaming business. But number 15, Lotus, a wonderful game from um, Renegade Game Studios. It's a, another one of those games that the table presence is out of this world. I love it. You can see there, we're literally building uh, flowers using the pedal cards. It's so gorgeous. Uh, it's set collection with area uh, control, a majority. You place, you know, your little uh, insect tokens and trying to uh, grab as many, you know, on the, each pedal as possible so you can take those in for points. And as you take in the pedals, you get points and also get uh, unlock special abilities. Plays in about 30 minutes. I've always enjoyed this game. Um, just looking at it, I was like, oh man, I need to play this again. I, I love games that are, you know, just bring, just that table presence. Again, just gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, look at the pedals there. You can actually see lotus flowers and they i don't know the names of the flowers but wonderful game it's been around it's been around for years one of the first or early games that i got when i got into the hobby um which was lotus so definitely recommend check that out um yeah and uh slivers this is so true duct tape is how all great streamers start out yeah you know i think most things in life friends uh duct tape has a, a has some kind of role in it <laughs> oh my gosh thank you slivers okay uh, moving on to our number 14 game. Uh, this is another one uh, that I played at Dice Tower West for the first time. I want to thank um, friend Dead Last again, who's in our Discord channel, for teaching this to me. It's a simple game, but it's just really, really pleasant and satisfying. It's called Islet. Uh, as you can see there, this is the official video from Holland Spiel Games. You're just taking shoestrings and placing them in this like board of, I don't know, I don't know how many holes there are, but what you're doing is just rolling dice, placing it. You count how many holes you're uh, away from the uh, string or the lace, and you, you put it in there. Um, and you just go until there are no no more spaces available. As you can see, there's the board, there's the dice. You just, you're doing one of the strings, either one, doesn't matter which color. But you go until there are no more open spaces. I, It's such a simple concept. I played this thing like a dozen times. I played, oops, um, I played with um, Nick Murphy. I played with Dead Last again several times. I played uh, with uh, Matthew of Room 51 and all kinds of people. I, I just had this game. It was one of the games that I brought to Dice Tower West that got so much play. And I'm so, so happy that I bought this game last year during the uh, Holland Spiel um, uh, sale that they had here. Uh, last year, they always do that at the uh, end of the, the year. They have a big uh, sale. So really, really cool game. Check that out, folks. I mean, it's it's so simple. It's a it's a dexterity, not a dexterity game, but it's a roll and move game, right? Which a lot of like hardcore games may look down upon, but there are per hey, this is an example of a wonderful roll and move game that works well. You're just rolling dice and doing the thing. I'm uh, thinking Marrakesh does that as well. Just roll dice and they have a little area majority or area control game to it. This one is just so pleasing to put. It's just so satisfying, right? It almost feels like you're knitting. I mean, I don't knit or sew or whatever, but. I feel like this would be sort of like that experience. But great game. Number 14 on my list, Islet. Okay, moving right along. Uh, number 13, I have a photo of this game because um, I have just filmed a video and it's going to be on the Rattle Runs Through channel soon. I don't know when, but I didn't want to spoil the video yet. So we're going to show you a photo that I took of number 13, Camel Up, the card game. Uh, this is the yes, this is the game based on the very big hit Camel Up. It's a race game, just like the original. It has those camels that we all love that hop on top of each other or slide underneath each other, and you're betting on it. Uh, it's a betting game. It's like a day at the camel races. A lot of fun. I <coughs> wasn't too sure about this game at first. I messed up a couple of the rules, and it was it was like eh, oh it's okay, but then I reread the rules. I replayed it. And I realized, hey, this has got something that the original does not have, and that's hand management. You can actually control, you have a little more control over how those camels move. You know, the, the OG Camel Cup, or Camel Cup, for those of the, the, you'd like to have a laugh, uh, has that pyramid with a dice. You shake that up and then pop one out. Wonderful component. One of my favorite components of all board gaming. But this one replaces that with cards. So you're going to draw, um, you know, a hand of cards, 
that's going to control the movement of the camels. You're going to put some of those into the deck for that round or that leg, and some of those will be discarded for that round or that leg. And I think that's a really neat way to, you know, have a little more agency as far as like, hey, I know that the blue horse is going to move up this many, or blue camel is going to move up this many spaces this round. Maybe I can like trick my opponent to, you know, bet on some other horse. Oh, it, it's, you're going to see the video. It's going to be real soon on Rattle Runs 2. I think it's, um, I want to say in a week or two, uh, I'm recording this May 1st, so we'll, we'll see. But Camel Up, the card game, good stuff. If you like the original, I think you'll like this. It, <laughs> if you're not a fan, of, <laughs> excuse me, if you're not a fan of the original, I don't think this will convert you. But folks that know the original game, I think they'll have fun like saying, hey, this is just like Camel Up, but it's got a little different uh, mechanism here to move the horses. And Bonzinator's in the house. Hi, Bonz. Good to see you here. Um... <coughs> <laughs> I got my post-COVID cough, and uh, thank you for hanging out with us today, folks. Doing the uh, games that I played in March and April this month. Uh, next up is number 12. Uh, this is a, a preview I did on my Kickstarter uh, pay, or for, for Kickstarter on my channel. It's called Ecosfera. <coughs> I really like this one. Um, this is a game of building biomes and uh, getting the world back in shape after, you know, and uh, you start with elements there. It's a deck building game. It's really got this really cool mechanism where you don't really have to worry about the currency of the game to get cards into your deck. You can just, you know, as long as you have some of the elements there, you can grab one more in your turn to get the fungi or the plant cards. <coughs> Excuse me. And then after that, as the deck cycles through, you're going to get the animal cards. And those animals, eventually, when they match up, they're going to bring in the biomes. It's a cooperative deck builder, which is really neat. And I played the solo game which was tougher than I thought. I, I, here's my playthrough here. I didn't beat it. I got halfway to my goal and like, unfortunately didn't get there, <coughs> but really clever, uh, sharp. Uh, this is a prototype. So not all the artwork's done, um, but the art that was done was really cool. And I was very, very impressed by how, um, you know, just <coughs> clever. They took the, uh, deck building this and the fact that it's a cooperative game, um, for deck builder. I, I think that's really, really neat so uh that's my number 12 i'm gonna, <coughs> I'm gonna hack up a lung here folks <laughs> oh my gosh uh yeah bond says forgot this was a video and was impressed by how uh quickly well was moving yeah that's me on like 10 cups of coffee right back in the day <laughs> uh those of you watching on youtube this is recorded live on twitch uh, come join us on twitch sometime folks you can click on the show notes below and get a link to um, all the stuff I do on the interwebs. Yes, Rolling Reggie, thank you. Someone get this man a lozenge. I just had a, uh, a, a, a lozenge earlier. I'm switching over to tea, but man. <coughs> Blame COVID, folks. Uh, by the way, follow Bonds and uh, Rolling Reggie, folks, if you don't already. All right, let's move on to my number 11 game of the month. This one I just played a few days ago. I've been I've heard so many great things about this and I've had it on my shelf of shame for a while now um, and I'm like oh why did I wait on this game it's so good number 11 undaunted Normandy and here's our friend uh, Kimberly Tolson again I'm gonna take some tea real quick hold on <coughs> we were just talking about deck building this is deck building with um, like area um, point to point movement um gosh it's so good it's so smart i play this with my buddy daryl it's a two-player game you know the whole war theme thing doesn't really do anything for me but i do find that you know i do enjoy them uh sometimes but so this is like you know d-day right uh the allies are you know invading europe normandy in this case and going against the uh, axis powers or germany so it's u.s and germany wow this is so good um you play your playing your deck and you're building up your forces the deck controls your troops on the map and gives you all the abilities that you can do to move to attack you're trying to you know grab control or you're just trying to do certain objectives it's got this campaign mode where you start with you know historically you know <coughs> it's not totally historically accurate just the way you know they've abstracted uh, stuff but it, they do give you the history of each like attack and battle very cool and they've they've have a bunch of expansions already the one i want to get i forget the name of it but it has an, a solo uh expansion i need to get this because i want to play this a lot more daryl and i were super impressed 
um, you know, we played it or we learned it just the other day, played it. And I was like, we need to start playing this. He's like, oh yeah, definitely. So, so good. We're gonna, I'm gonna be enjoying this game for a while. Uh, that's my number 11, Undaunted Normandy. Okay, moving right along. Um, let's go to number 10. We're gonna get to the top 10 now. Uh, so I played, in the month of March and April, I played a total of 19 analog games. Um, again, it was a rough, it's been a rough time. I had COVID, um, I dealt, um, uh, my father passed away. Uh, and then there's other stuff going on as well, but those are the two big ones, um, you know, and so I didn't play as many analog games as I, I wanted to, but I did play a bunch of digital games and I'm slowly but surely getting back to work here and uh, doing the analog games. And one of the things I got to play uh, for my channel, as you can also see on the Rado Rusty channel, is Point City. Here, I was just talking about my buddy Daryl. Uh, here we are playing Point City, the standalone next uh, expansion game in uh, to uh, Point Salad. Point Salad was a big hit with me and my fam, and Point City, I think I preferred to it than Point Salad. So this adds a layer, a, a lot more, a few more layers of strategy to it. It's a little more complex, but not that complex. I mean, gamers uh, will be able to enjoy it. Um, you know, they'll, they'll pick it up quickly. But I think as far as like a new gamer or family game net, I'd probably stick with Point Salad. What this does is the same thing as Point Salad. You have a tableau of cards, you're gonna draw two. But this one has a little spatial thing where you know you have to add draw two that are next uh, adjacent to each other and then you're going to grab mainly resources but then you're going to eventually turn those in for some of the building cards and you can only build them if you have the resources in front of you you discard them get the building and this is where the engine building comes in and i love this it's got a very light sort of like um uh splendor type uh engine building where one building is getting to get you a resource, another building is getting you another resource. You use those resources to get more buildings, and eventually you're gonna score the points. And um, they also have the civic buildings, which get you tokens that uh, give you certain conditions. So if I got the token that says, hey, for every pair of energy and um, uh, community that you have, you're gonna get two points. And then you get little sets of that. So, so good. It, it really took point salad and just, you know, fleshed it out, uh, gave it a little more depth, and it's a wonderful game. I cannot recommend it highly enough. So, so good. Um, so that's not my number 10, Point City. Let's move on to number nine. I'm going back to uh, Dice Tower West, where I actually got to see Bonds and uh, Rolling Reggie. Uh, this is my number nine. I got to play with friends from the community, GB Glazer and his partner. Uh, I love this game. I was so stoked to be able to play it with um, them. Uh, Samurai from Reiner Kinesia. The one and only, the one and true doctor, as our friend Borgie Mirage would say. Samurai, this is my favorite Reiner Kinesia game. It just, there's so many games. These guys published, what, six, seven hundred games. It's hard to narrow down one favorite. Uh, this is always going to have a spot in my heart because this is the first Reiner Kinesia game that I played. That, that at least I remember playing um, <coughs> from when I first started playing modern board games. It was the first one in open game night. I may, no, you know, I'm going to say this is the first, I was going to say maybe I played a Ryder Kinitsu game in the past before I was in a modern board games, maybe I didn't know, but I would have remembered it. You know, you always remember your, you know, you know, experiences like this. But anyways, Samurai, tile laying game, area control. Uh, it's an abstract at its heart, but oh man, it's so good. Uh, you you and your opponents, uh, in this case, Michelle and I are playing two player game. Uh, first of all, it scales really well. For two players, you just start with this map three or four players, you just add pieces to the map and just expand it, it's really easy. Uh, but anyways, what you're doing, everyone has the same um, tiles, but you know, you mix them up and you're gonna draw them at random, place them behind your screen. So you have, you know, some choices what to, like what to place down there, but they're gonna come out at different times. Uh, a couple of those tiles have uh, special abilities. Most of the tiles have a number and a, a type. So the three different types that you're trying to control, uh, I think it's religion, agriculture, and warfare. Um, and there's are little different tokens there. And as you surround them with your numbers, um, you are gonna uh, take those behind your screen. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most in two, uh, two majorities of the three different types will win. Then there's like a bunch of tiebreakers, which I always forget about. Um, I can't name them off the top of my head. I always have to go to the rule book. But like other Kinesia games, folks, it's got like two pages of rules. It's so easy. I mean, you're just taking tiles and trying to control little areas around each of these items here. It's wonderful. I love, love, love Samurai. And uh, it would have, you know, I'm sure, it, I mean, it's ranked in the top 10. 
it could easily be a number one um, for me. But you know what? I want to highlight some other games this month. And one of them, uh, so that was number nine, Samurai. One of them that I want to highlight is number eight, uh, which I played on the Rotto Runs Through channel. I mean, <clears throat> I'm recording this May 1st, folks. May 4th is right around the corner. It is Star Wars, the deck building game. Wow. This is like Star Realms, but pumped up with way more strategy, way of, you know, a few more uh, things going on. <coughs> you have the, a couple of different currencies you have to keep track of. I love the Force. The Force is like a tug of war between, you know, one side plays the Empire, one side plays the Rebels. There's a lot of back and forth. And B Travis 72 watching here on live on Twitch, says yes. Uh, Star Wars deck build game is so, so good. Yes, I love it so much um i mean i'm a star wars geek uh, to begin with uh, again may 4th is star wars day if you're watching this folks i will be doing a marathon this thursday as long as my voice holds up and i'm not hacking all over the place i'm gonna be playing star wars games i'll be doing star wars trivia i'll be reading from star wars books i'll probably i'm gonna try to find a solo version of this game so i want to play it um you start with your starting deck of empire or um rebel scum cards right and you're gonna play them and you're gonna eventually recruit uh, all the characters you love into your um, deck, they're going to give you more powers, uh, special abilities. What you're trying to do is blow up uh, three of your base, uh, enemy's bases. <coughs> so that's basically like um, the ships or the uh, outposts <coughs> in um, uh, Star Realms. But, oh boy, I I cannot recommend this. I mean, I've been saying this all these games. I can't recommend them highly enough. I really enjoy this. Um, this is available from uh, fantasy flight games so so good again if you're a star wars geek like me you're gonna love it if you're not i think as if you're a deck building thing i think you really appreciate the things that they've done here uh to take de uh, a two-player deck building like fighting game and uh they've added you know just the three different currencies that you have to keep track of you have your combat and just the way uh, the clever system that they did uh, using the force i think it's really worth looking into if you're in the deck building but if you're a star wars fan honestly it's a it's a must have and yes i know it's fantasy flight so i'm sure there's expansions coming out and yes i am all in on those so that's my number uh what is it eight game star wars the deck building game let's take some more tea and um we shall continue bond says to me you still played a ton of games i did yeah i can't i can't complain but <clears throat> it's on average, uh, I probably uh, average uh, analog games like 25 to 30 games per month uh, on on a regular month. But, you know, I, again, I've been uh, dealing with a lot of different things going on. Uh, so um, as, as slower, like this is like March and April. So it's, it's really a lot slower. <coughs> B. Travis, again, folks, we are live on Twitch if you're watching on YouTube. Says another solo version was just released last week. I called Lee. Oh, okay. I'm going to be looking into that. And as Variant Hex uh, reminds, yay uh, for a marathon. I was wondering what your May the 4th. Yeah, so May the 4th, folks, come back on Twitch. And I'll, I'll have it on YouTube the next day, obviously. But I'm going to be doing a bunch of Star Wars stuff. Super excited about that. And you know what else I'm excited about? I'm excited about uh, my next game on the list. This is a number seven. Um, a longtime favorite. There's this one, another one that could easily be my number one. Y'all, I mean, I've been talking about a lot of deck building games. And this is quite possibly my all-time favorite deck building game it's baseball highlights 2045 come on it's baseball it's deck building and it's perfect i love it it's um a wonderful two-player game it plays three and four players i'll never play it three four players it's i don't know just something about the two players that you each feel like a manager managing your team and it's got this wonderful back and forth where i play a hitter and you can play a card that offsets or you know eliminates my actions immediately or you can let me go and then i have uh, guys on you know players on base and then you come back with yours and you oh it's so much back and forth and what's brilliant is <clears throat> you know you play a, it feels like a mini game of baseball you play six cards it really does like feel like hey these were the highlights of the game right oh i was in the bottom of the ninth i hit a home run blah 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 really Oh, it's Mike Fitzgerald's masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, I actually got to meet Mike Fitzgerald at Dice Star West. I was totally like fanboy. And I was sitting there. Uh, he came over, talked to Rado, and I was sitting there. And I just had to say, hey, Mike, huge, huge fan of baseball. Holly's one of my favorite games of all time. He was really gracious, a uh, really nice guy. And I got to play a prototype of his new game. But it was nothing like this. But 
if I had to pick one deck builder, this may be it, folks. This is, oh, so good. Again, even if you don't like the baseball theme, um, my buddy Gerald is not a baseball fan. He loves this game, and we played a lot. And it's one of those games that you'll, as a deck building fan, you'll appreciate how clever it is and how neat it is to play. You know, you have your, uh, you know, I, you can see me right there in the video. I'm, my players are running around, and it's futuristic. So it's got robots, it's got cyborgs. So it's hilarious, too. It's got names that are based on real players' names, but they mash them up. So, like, you know, the, my favorite is always, like, uh, Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa. And it's called, uh, like, uh, was it Sammy? Oh, shoot. Barry Sosa, was it? They, they combined those two. Anyways, hilarious. Wonderful um, baseball game. So amazing. The, the best. Um, let's continue uh, to number six. Um, I did not film a video for this, but um, I... Oh, good. I, that's right. I played this with my buddy, Daryl, again. He's, he's my main gaming buddy outside of my wife, Michelle. Uh, but I was really blown away by this one. This is a Scott Alms game. Uh, number six is Beer and Bread. And hey, there's my brothers from another mother, uh, Nick and Mike Murphy. Um, they're playing on their channel, the Brothers Murph. This felt like an Uwe Rosenberg game to me. It's got farming. It's got um, resource management. It's got this just very clever mechanisms and clean gameplay. I mean, that's the best word I can describe very clean gameplay as you can see there you're just going back and forth trying to um uh, you, you have a, a, a hand of cards trying to get the resources you need to uh, bake your uh, bread or you know make your beer but the really neat thing is after each card that you play your hand goes to your opponent i love that gameplay and it goes back and forth one round and then the next round you have like a um a tableau or a market of cards so you take a card and then you can switch with a tableau and it goes back and forth like that so so neat i i think it's so clever and i was really stoked to try this one with my friend daryl because he had he'd really liked it and um he was like raving about it and i was like okay we'll see and sure enough yeah it was awesome so i i can't uh, i i I want to play this on my channel. I don't have a copy of it. I was just going to say I can't play this because I don't have a copy. But I need to reach out and uh, get a copy because this is so good. Um, as you can see, Nick and Mike, let me get a password a little bit here in the video. Um, what do they got? There it is. Nick and Mike, talking, talking. I, I love the Brothers Murph. They're so funny. Um, so as you can see there, it's just it's a board full of resources. And you go to the different, you have different uh, abilities that you can do or powers. And eventually you're gonna you want to get you know your um, beer and bread made uh, for those oh so precious uh, victory points and a rolling Reggie says oh so cool why are we all such suckers for simple wooden pieces right just something about ah, give me all of the wooden pieces I, I'm a sucker for them as well um, Blue Dice and Nelly says I saw a copy of this at a friend local game store in Chatsworth didn't know much about it. Though, so oh no yeah go pick it up it's a it's a wonderful two-player game and it's great because it has a lot of those decisions that are you know nice and you know tense or crunchy but it plays in like 35 minutes it's not like um you know a game that takes hours to play and i i always love that uh along with what reggie's saying uh it's got really good dual purpose cards right so you're always going to pick one of the options you have use it on your side and then eventually give your hand of cards to your opponent and hey you, could, they, you may set them up for something they want to do. So it's got that really nice tension of what do I want to give them or what am I getting from them and what do I don't want to give to them or, you know, oh, so, so good. So that is my number six, Beer and Bread. Uh, let's move on to number five. Oh, did I? Okay, yeah, I clicked it here. Oh, boy. That, that's the fun thing about uh, doing this stuff live, folks. You're clicking buttons and things are disappearing and reappearing. But, hey. Number five, and all, another all-time favorite of mine, Project L. Now, this one's with the Finesse expansion. Um, Michelle and I did this on our channel, uh, Hair Tabletop Tonight. And what you're watching is the run-through I did for Rotto Runs-Through. And am I wearing the same shirt? I No, no, I'm wearing a different shirt. As you can see here, both have gray shirts. Uh, but this is a tile lane game. It's got those Tetris polyomino style pieces. And you're, sol you're trying to get those puzzles, uh, create uh, solve those puzzles, placing the pieces, as you can see there to get points, but also to get more uh, pieces. So it's got that engine building element where you're building a puzzle, you get more pieces for your following puzzles and so forth. What the Finesse expansion does is really ramps it up to the next level and it becomes, with that expansion, I think 
one of my top three of all time tile lane games, if not my number one. <coughs> Excuse me. It has these in-game goals. Each round, you're gonna be able to, to do one of those moves or you use one of those pieces to um, complete something. <coughs> so Project L Finesse, an all-timer for me, folks. I mean, get check this game out. Um, I, you know, the that ex, uh, expansion um, adds those uh, different currency, a new currency where you can get more actions per turn. So it's so streamlined and just tight, and it's it's a perfect, perfect tile lane slash engine building game. That's why it's my number five that I played in March and April, Project L Finesse. Um, that, so that was my run through on Rado's channel. Let's look at another one that I did for Rado's channel. Another all timer for me. I love this game. I mean, how many times have I said that? I, I, I love, love, love Paperback. This is Paperback, the 10th anniversary edition. Uh, this, I believe, is currently still on Kickstarter. It's, if not, it's, it's closing soon or it has closed already. Go back to this. Just take my word for it. It takes Paperback, which is a combination of Scrabble and Dominion. It's been mashed up in, the, again, another wonderful deck building game. Um, you know, between this and uh, Baseball Highlights 2045, I'd be set for deck builders, folks. This one, though, because I, I love word games. I'm a word nerd. Uh, this one adds in this new solo mode, which is on in Fuego, on fire. It's so fantastic. Um, it's got this uh, thing where you're playing against a spy. You're doing a spy novel. And what you're doing is trying to prevent them from adding pressure to your you know, de uh, hand of cards here. Those victory points cards on the left, that tableau, if at any time there's four pressure cubes, you just lose. So the AI has a certain way they move. And this is what I love about the solo mode, folks. You're still playing Scrabble meets Dominion, but now you have actions. You can see there on the left side there. Uh, you roll the die and that's gonna show you what action the AI is gonna take, but it also blocks the action that you can take. So you're gonna take one of the other uh, remaining actions. So those can be like take off cubes, uh, get, you know, get extra movement and so forth. Oh my gosh, I didn't expect this. So I, you know, I'd heard about 10th anniversary edition. I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm sure there'll be new cards, maybe a variant or two. That solo one sold me right off the bat. I was like, that's what we uh, did for the Rado uh, channel was do the solo game. Um, it also includes um, genres, which is asymmetric player abilities. Um, of course, I didn't show that a solo game because it doesn't really make sense uh, to do uh, different abilities when you're playing by yourself. But against a uh, two, three, or four, or a two, three, or four player game, those asymmetric abilities are gonna be awesome. So you don't actually put those in your deck. You're just gonna have these abilities that you can unlock while you play the game. Oh, this is so good. And then they have typos, which basically clog your deck. Uh, someone can, you know, throw a typo onto you. It's actually part of the solo game too. So you have to spell a word with that letter or it remains in your deck and it loses you points at the end of the game. If you spell a game with that typo, then you just uh, discard it out of your deck. It's great. Um, you can see too, if you're familiar with the original game, that setup is a lot different, right? There's only three columns there. They've condensed a lot of that stuff and it makes so much more sense. I love this way that they've done this. Um, still has all the stuff uh, of the original paperback. Folks, it's it's wonderful. If you're in a word, build, word building games, I think it's a must have. If you're in a deck building games, definitely a must try. Uh, not everyone likes word games and I get that. You know, it's not everyone's jam, but hey, I'm a word nerd. I actually do a show called Words on Wednesday uh, every other week with my friend Amanda McKnight where we talk about comic books and play word based games. So I'm a word nerd for life. Number four, paperback 10th anniversary edition. I'm gonna sip some tea for my um, aching throat here. Okay, so we're going to the top three now. And the, the, it was tough, actually, I got to my like top five, top six, seven, and it was tough to put the, you know, where do I put these? You know, like baseball highlights could, and paperback could actually, you know, be at the top of the list, but I had to give it up for some newer games. So they really blew me away with theme with mechanisms, with just how smart these designs were. So number three, so good. Number three, let's go to Japan. Uh, from Josh Wood and AEG. Josh Wood designed one of my favorite uh, tableau building games called Santa Monica. Again, I'm a Southern California native folks and to have Santa Monica in that form, he really captured really this really cool vibe. Got the boardwalk, it's beautiful, it's really a clever, um, way that you place uh, car, cards in your tableau and at the end of the game you walk through and uh, you, you see how you know you gather points depending on where your uh, people are uh, throughout the, the um, 
in the game. Let's Go Japan ramps it up a notch, and I think this is an awesome tableau building, if not one of the best I've played in recent times. Probably, man, I, I'm trying to, it's, it's been a while since I've played a tableau builder this good, and this thematic. Um, I had mentioned in my uh, thoughts when I did this for Rado's channel, it really, it really reminded me of Thinker Themer, Amy and Maggie, because it's got this perfect marriage of th um, mechanism and theme. You are building, a, you're planning a trip to Japan here, and what you're doing is adding tableaus to Sunday through Saturday, or Monday through Saturday, uh, on this trip. And, you know, you can see as it goes along, like, oh, on Monday, I'm going to go uh, eat some ramen. And then after, uh, when I start with ramen, hey, after that, I'm going to go to a museum. Then I'm going to take the train from Tokyo to Kyoto to go see a sumo wrestling match. And all these wonderful, you know, uh, things. And, you know, I love the story behind the um, design of this game. Josh Wood had actually tried to go to Japan uh, with his partner at the start of the pandemic. Pandemic happened, couldn't go. So he just decided to make a game of it. And it's an awesome game. Uh, you can see here, I'm playing the solo game. I'm playing against uh, the AI. Um, and what you're doing is just adding cards to your tableau. And as you do, you're going to set yourself up for the different uh, uh, score tracks. And what's neat is you're going to score at the end. And as you go day by day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you actually can read off each thing. So like what I was doing, like, hey, I'm still going to start off with Robin, going to, you know, a sumo match, going to take the train. You read that off each day, and then you're going to score that as it goes along. You score from Monday through Saturday. So it's got this neat little, you know, twist of, hey, I need to set myself up for certain things uh, in the game. Can I get those symbols that I need by the end of Saturday in order to score the maximum amount of points? Oh, gosh, it's so good. And it's actually got like a mood tracker. So you can see if you're happy or sad, you get more points if you're happy, of course. Um, and if the things line up, uh, you have to have uh, uh, train tokens to get from one area to the next. If you don't, you're going to lose points because, hey, you lost out on getting the train. It's, it's going to make you grumpier, right? So, oh, great game. Uh, this was on Kickstarter. Again, this was a paid uh, preview I did for them for Kickstarter. It's going to be released, I think, later on this year. But if you can, when it comes out, check it out. Awesome, awesome game. That's my number three for March and April. Let's go to Japan. <coughs> Excuse me. Got two left here. Uh, these two I did not do videos for. I just played these folks in real life. I love them so much. Number two, I just played with my buddy Daryl. Uh, this is a game called Mosaic. A story of civilization. Here's the Rattle Runs Through channel uh, video from Shea Parker. Shea's the one to watch, folks. I mean, he does, he's so good at what he does, explaining rules and gameplay. Wonderful, wonderful um, uh, video content creator. Go check him out at uh, RTFM, uh, his channel. But this is a Civ game, <coughs> and it is a hand management game. It's got area control or area majority. Um, gosh, it's so good. I'm looking at it right now. It's a Civ game, so that means there's going to be a ton of setup. Uh, that is, you know, thankfully I played a two-player game with Daryl, and he managed all that stuff. Um, you're supposed to, like, do, I think, a back and forth as far as setup. But, you know, just Daryl, he's like, hey, first game, I'll just take care of everything. Oh, okay, cool. So we got right into the game, and boy, I love it. I love that, you know, there's always, there's an attention, there's a tension in every turn where you're excruciating, like, oh, I want to do this, but I'm giving my opponent an opportunity to do something else that I might want. Like I might want to go to tech and grab something there, but I know that he's going to place something, you know, where he takes an area on, uh, in, um, you know, on the map there. So you're always trying to constantly manage your resource. Like, Oh, I don't have enough population to do what I want. So I need to get that population, but I'm leaving the tech open or I'm leaving, you know, other things open for my opponent. Oh, man, it's so good. Uh, what I love the most about this, you know, most civ builders, I'm not the biggest civ building fan, but I love about this, the turns are so snappy. You're doing one action and, you know, you're producing goods or, you, I mean, you take a, a, like a, I think, is it called production? I forget what it's called, but it, there's a production turn that you can do where you just get stuff. And then you're mainly using those uh, goods and um, resources, I mean, to uh, do the other things on the board um, throughout. There's a lot of different things you can do, but honestly, it's easy to learn. It's just one of those games, like, it's going to take me a while to, like, so-called master or just get good at it. Um, but, oh, so smart, so good. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Mosaic, A Story of Civilization. Uh, my number one, so a lot of great stuff here. And my three, my 
these two two games tend to be heavier. Uh, I mean, not tend to be. They just happen to be heavier this month because I, I just I fell in love with the designs. I think they're so good. And my number one, I played it Dice Tower West for the very first time. And I just want to keep playing it. It's on BGA Board Game Arena now. I need to start playing it there. But my number one game for March and April of this year is Earth. Oh, man. So awesome. Hey, there's Monique and Naveen, our friends from Before You Play. They, they do an excellent teach this video. I got very Arc Nova-like vibes to this game, but in half the time. You can play, what I love about this, you're still building um, you know, your, your Earth, right? Your, your tableau here in this case of cards where you're managing you know, habitats, animals, creatures, and so forth. What I love about this, it's got simultaneous actions. So everyone's taking their turn at the same time. Uh, there are a couple of things that you know could affect other players, but for the most part, you know, you're just doing stuff at the same time. You're gonna, you know, pick an action. And I love just like Arc Nova, you take an action, everyone else can take like the lesser of that action, right? I mean it's not exactly like it, it has a, it's a different style uh, than Arc Nova, but it's got that I love that. Like, hey, I'm gonna go do this action. Everyone else can do it, but it's got not going to be as good as the person who uh, called it, the active player. But then, you know, as you go on, you're collecting resources and building your tableau so you can start comboing stuff. It's combo-rific, just like those games that I love. And, oh my gosh, so good. So, a game, you know, <clears throat> I've been in games Arc Nova that have been like, you know, two plus hours, right? It's just, it just takes a while, if you, especially if you're new to the game. This one, I played a five-player game. It was me, Rado nick murphy shay parker and one of shay's buddies and it was a learning game for everyone except for uh richard he taught it we got through almost we got through about two-thirds of the game within an hour it was that fast and we had to call it a little early just because you know nick had a, an appointment i had a meeting i had to go to but oh my gosh for a game that has that much depth and complexity to be able to play it in like an hour and a half or hour or so chef's kiss i love games like that i think it's wonderful uh that games like this exist and i so far it's one of my favorite games i've played this year and i think it's it's going to continue to be a hit folks it, it's, it's wonderful so those are my games for march april 2023 this has been rulos rapid thank you so much for joining me today i appreciate y'all be sure to hit the like and subscribe below uh, buttons below and um, we'll see you next time on the wrap-up be sure to watch me on twitch for all kinds of live uh, board game playthroughs and until next time i'll see you later take care